Hi guys, my name's Chris Marco Flores and over this next year I'm going to put myself through my own programme called Impossible to Possible and over the next year I'm going to be sharing to you how I go, how I do, what I do, why I'm doing what I'm doing, how I'm planning my things so you at home can do it yourself and the programme is for people who are in a body that they feel trapped in and I feel like it's too hard to escape um, and this could be someone who needs to lose weight and has tried to lose weight for a very long period of time and feels like it's impossible to escape and been on loads of different nutrition plans and um, exercise plans and weight loss programs but they can never fully escape and so the aim of my program and the reason why I'm doing it is I spent a couple of years well quite a few years focusing on other people's lifestyle and making other people's lives healthier and happier and kind of neglecting my own because I was at such a high fitness level when I was looking after other people's I was just at maintaining stage, but I wasn't maintaining. I was doing less exercise than normal. I was um, eating more bad food than normal, and I and it started creating a spiral effect. So I was eating more and more bad food. So my bad habits became even worse. My fitness started dropping. My health started declining. And before it's getting too worse, I put myself on the program to get myself out of it over this next year to make my health go back up and back to where I used to be. And get rid of the bad habits and start using the good habits so today what I want to talk about is the planning and preparation stage of what I'm trying to achieve so within this year within my program which is so different to other people is I encourage people to um, do eight challenges and eight challenges within the year and the reason why it helps shift focus so when people want a weight loss program they are so focused on dropping the weight and focusing so much on the diet and so much focus on um, the exercise, which is great, but you're so zoned into so little. When you zoned into so little, um, it, you end up creating like the yo-yo effect, what I say. You know, you do a diet or program for a short period of time, but as soon as it's finished, you gain good wins in that short period of time. So you lose weight in that short period of time, but as soon as it's finished, um, you slowly start going back to your old lifestyle, putting the weight back on, and all being worse than what you started off with. So the idea when you go onto my program, by doing these challenges, these eight different challenges, it helps shift your focus and it helps you focus on changing your lifestyle, not just your diet. And when you change your lifestyle, um, everything changes and it changes forever. And you've got to make sure it's a long period of time, not a short period of time. Quick wins only win for quick times. Um, and so, like I was saying, over this next year, I've got eight challenges that I've put myself through. I've got four on display, which I'll talk about in a second. But with, in today, what I want to talk about is the planning and the preparation, and they go hand in hand. And they sound very simple, which they are very simple, um, but if you consciously do this, it makes your chance of succeeding so much greater. Um, and it, it only takes a little bit of time, a couple of hours before each mission that you do, because each mission is going to have a different kind of plan and preparation sort of uh, process through it but by doing so again you're going to achieve a greater chance of success so what I want to talk about today is one what to focus on and the reason why you put what you want to focus on exercise nutrition wise is as I've got four challenges laid out in here there's I've got challenges on horizon and some are slightly different to the others so if I go through them the first one is a half marathon which is less than two weeks time the second one is a 15k mud run which is roughly, I think, six weeks' time. Um, and then the third one is a half Ironman. If you don't know what a half Ironman, that is a 1.2-mile swim straight into a 50-mile cycle, straight into a 14-mile run. Um, and that is in two and a half months. And then afterwards, I've got a six, I'm have got going to create a six-pack. And the reason why I'm creating a six-pack is because the message that I put across is I don't really care about six packs and I don't really care about trying to get someone to a size zero because they don't last. Having a mindset does. Getting people to achieve things that they think is impossible um, creates a, a, a snowball effect and make them achieve things that they didn't think is possible. So that's more important to me. So when I've been putting this message across, people have been saying that I'm not, I don't know how to create a six pack and that's why I'm doing it. So it's not the most important thing to me at the moment. The most important thing to me is to get myself into a good mindset and to complete things that I know I'm going to be struggling with at this time. So once I've hit the half Ironman, I'm going to be in a good fit mental state. I'm in a good mental state, but I'm going to be even better. And then I'm going to walk and talk people through how to get six pack and really refine the details and completely show you exactly how you do it so you can follow at home. And as you can see, not to show off, but there's nothing to show off. 
there is no body of a god underneath there. However, there is a good mindset that's going to complete a half marathon in less than two weeks, and that's so much more greater body that um, people really desire, which is good and comes anyway. <clears throat> so, what to focus on? Um, and the next thing is, uh, the second thing is, what I plan to aim for over this next. Because I'm only planning for the next mission for the next two weeks and I've been doing it for about five weeks now. So I'm going backwards and I'm going to go show you what I've been doing. Um, how I plan to achieve it or how I planned to achieve it and how I planned it to look. Um, because my lifestyle is pretty hectic and I'm guessing your lifestyle is probably not um, probably as hectic as mine. So this is no high production video so what i'm going to do i'm going to pause the video i'm going to wipe off i'm going to start with the first one because i love drawing little diagrams for you to um, see because i think it's the best way to explain it so let me pause it quickly wipe it off um little diagram you can understand okay so this is just a very quick one um what to focus on because my next mission is half a marathon half marathon is 13.1 miles so it's a lot of running However, I've got to make sure to look at the horizon, what I've got coming up, which is the half Ironman, because 15K is running, nothing but running, but half Ironman is cycling, swimming, and running, so I have to train them three things. I know I've got six packs, but I'm not worried about that. As long as I concentrate getting some muscle, um, when that comes, I can just focus on that when I get to it. Um, but these things, I've got to make sure to understand, because if I don't train or bear mind, I'm going to suffer when it comes to half Ironman, which is less than two and a half months. So I've got to be very tactical. Luckily, I was in the army and taught me a lot about tactics. And I'm um, trying to prioritize and think how, what, what do I need to focus on? So there's two things you need to focus on. One is the exercise, two is the nutrition. Um, so first of all, I'm gonna go for the exercise in. So to, to, to focus, there's um, um, the swimming, running, and cycling. And there's strength conditioning, but strength conditioning comes with all aspects of training. So that's just like a side thing that you put in, even if you just to do the running. But I need to make sure I'm better at running. I need to make sure I'm better at swimming. I need to make sure I'm better at cycling. So I analyze my levels, analyze what levels I am at each one of these, and then focus on which one I need to tackle first. And, and seeing as the half marathon's coming up, it's a very good idea to get the miles underneath your feet. Because... Um, um, because trying to do it all at once, you're gonna your 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 energies, your your results are gonna be less. Because if I try to do um, swimming, running, and cycling throughout the week, even though I've got the fifteen uh, the half uh, half marathon, you know my running time is not gonna be as great. But if I focus on just a couple of them, um, then my running time is gonna be a lot better. And when I come to the fifteen or the half Ironman, it 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 will help because I focus on achieving one certain thing which is a big tick like for example let me tell you so my main focus is running running because i am so weak at well when i first started a few weeks ago i'm so weak at running like my running abilities was very low um my swimming abilities fortunately i'm got i'm a very i like swimming so i've always swam so my swimming strength is not the greatest wasn't the greatest but it wasn't the worst cycling I, I, I can cycle all day long even though 50 miles is a long cycle and you should respect that it's 50 miles my main priority was to get the running underneath my belt and get the mindset that i can understand to run so that was my number one priority uh, number two was the swimming and then i'll talk about it when i go to the achievement what i try to achieve and if i hit certain things then i could incorporate the cycling but i had to hit certain levels with my running before i could focus on that one because of my half marathon because i know i'm not going to be ready to to do the half marathon by next week that's not the purpose the purpose is completing something that you know you cannot you don't think you can complete and by doing so it helps open up your mind create a snowball effect to show you can do more than you think you can achieve even though i've gone through this process with the army it's always good to keep going through it and challenge and um, pushing yourself further than you can imagine so running's on my end uh my main priority swimming because I can use it as a recovery, but also I want to increase my swimming abilities because swimming from the water to swimming in the lake is completely different. So it's important to keep that strength up. And it also helps when you swim properly, you have to breathe in a certain way um, because your head's underwater. So you have to keep it up and to keep the rhythm of breathing, it helps with your running breathing because you've got to kind of time it and it kind of synchronizes together and you've all kind of training. 
So that's just exercising. I'll go into more depth in a second. The next thing is nutrition, what to focus on. Because I had such poor nutrition, my main focus for this um, half, half marathon, one, I want to prepare my body to be able to perform at its best level, but also two, I'm trying to create a lifestyle change. So all I'm trying to focus on is going from a poor nutrition to a good nutrition. And I'm focusing really more on the stuff that I shouldn't eat rather than the stuff that I should eat. Um, because I naturally just eat the good stuff anyway. But when you focus on the stuff that you shouldn't eat, um, the only thing left to eat is good stuff. And luckily that I've got quite a knowledge of uh, fitness and health behind me that I know the kind of stuff that I need to make sure I get in. So when I'm training, I need lots of carbs, I need to keep my protein nice and high, and the fat will just fill it up, all the, the, the fat content, lots of vitamins and minerals. So um, lots of carbohydrate meals with lots of um, protein, anything that had eyes, um, a couple of protein shakes through the day sort of thing. Lots of vegetables, trying to incorporate as much vegetables and fruit as I can. Um, but also coming to the thing that I'm not consuming. So I gained a bad habit of eating loads of takeaways, drinking lots of fizzy drinks, chocolate. I could eat chocolate all day, every day long, which I nearly enough did. Um, you know, all the naughty things that you shouldn't be eating, I was eating. Luckily, I don't drink alcohol. Um, and it's just something that I gave up and it's the best thing I've ever done. And I highly recommend it if you are someone who does drink alcohol and you're suffering with weight loss. It's the one tool the devil would give to someone. If um, if the devil only had one tool to use to make sure some weight would stay on, it would be alcohol. Anyway, so what I've done is I've created a list of all the things that I need to give up. So one is takeaways, uh, all, the, all the things that I just said. And then I kind of, I, I took away things slowly. So the first two things I took away, which I started on the 7th of January, was um, takeaway and fizzy drinks. And that's for three weeks. So for three weeks, I, was, I had no, sorry, it's for three months, sorry. Um, so for three months, there's no takeaways and no fizzy drinks. And to this day, I've not had a takeaway or fizzy drink from that day. However, um, I did allow myself to have chocolate and I did allow myself to have crisps. Um, and what else? I think that's pretty much it. But the reason why I allowed myself to have them two things is because I know I couldn't have these things. I still had a bit of an escape route. So I had the chocolate and I had probably a bit more chocolate and um, crisps than I normally do to compensate for the takeaways that I didn't have. However, I was making sure I was incorporating normal healthy meals or as much healthy meals as I can. So then I was just filling up and picking out with chocolate and sweet or chocolates and crisps. Um, so I'd done that for three weeks. And then after three weeks, the stress, you know, your body starts to adapt to not having the takeaways and fizzy drinks. Then I was like, right, I'm taking one away. So I took the chocolate away, which was probably the hardest one for me. And so now I've not had any chocolate, um, well, beginning of February, pretty much. And, you know, it was very hard at the beginning, but it, it's so much easier because now I'll go for the nuts and things like that. Um, but I, I'm still allowed crisps. And um, by the end of this month, I'll have no crisps. And then all the things that I don't, I shouldn't have, I've focused on quite well. And I banned myself from them for three months. And then after three months, I'll have a two day binge of fizzy drinks to take away. And I can guarantee you that I won't want it or like it as much as I think I do. And it's learning to, learning to uh, train your body to not want it and not desire these things. And by doing this, it makes it very simple. So that's pretty much it. I'm gonna wipe it and I'm gonna go to the second one. So I'm going to jump to the second one, what I plan to aim for. So just give me a second. Okay, so this stage is what I plan to aim for by the time I hit half marathon. Um, and then I can go into the next one. So the nutrition I'm not going to put up because it's very simple. I just plan to cut out them things out of my nutrition by the end of the half marathon. And then once I've cut that out, then I can go into the next stage, which I talk about when I go into the next stage. But the exercise is, is more to it. So... I've got to look at the horizon. I've got cycling, swimming and running. However, most important is try to get the running underneath our feet. So in this little diagram, here is the three different levels of my running when I first started. So, or sorry, my first levels of exercise, uh, abilities of exercise, of the exercise. So the first exercise is swimming. Second one is running. And the third one is cycling. So when I first started, and I started this on the 7th of January, my swimming abilities was um, not too bad and this is the start where I started this is where I want to aim to be before I get to the event that I'm on 
Um, and this is like just a finishing, like I'm no longer going to surpass it. It's, and this is the point where I want to start competing. Because when I go for these events, the aim is to complete them, not compete in them. I just want to be able to complete them, not compete. If I was at this level of fitness, then I would want to compete in them. However, I'm not ready and I'm not going to be ready for any one of these events. So the aim is just to complete it. However, I need to get myself to a level to be able to complete. Um, so the aim is, it, this is where I want to be um, with the abilities. So if I talk you through it. So with the swimming, before I did a um, half Ironman, I want to be able to at least swim a mile or 1.2 mile front crawl without stopping the whole way. And if I could do that, which I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much done now, I can do that. Um, so my aim is to get a time. So my aim when I do um, the half Ironman for the swimming event part is to do it as fast as I can because I've hit the ability now where I'm past here. So now I just need to train faster for it. The running ability when I first started, it, it was shocking. Like trying to run was in a, non-existent, shall I say. So my aim before I hit the half my marathon is to be able to run 10K without stopping. So 10K is um, six miles roughly, um, or just over six miles. Um, and so if I can run 10K without stopping, then I'm I'm gonna be in the mental state of being able to run the whole this. I probably won't be able to run the whole distance, but I can run a quite big distance, have a little walk, run again. The cycling, um, I've got a 50 mile cycle. So I want to be able to run uh, cycle 25 miles comfortably within one sitting without stopping. So these are my aims to hit before I hit the half Ironman. Um, so what, I need, what I've been focusing on up until the half marathon is the running. I need to get this running up to here. Now if I do running, swimming and cycling every single week, then my running abilities would only come up to around about here. If I focus just on the running and put something else in, like either swimming or cycling, um, and I wanted to hit the swimming because I want to get a good time on the swimming, so I do running um, and cycling at the moment, then I'm going to be able to hit this level easier, and I have. And I'll show you in a second, I'll put it on the video. So um, my aim is to be able to run 10 kilometers without stopping, and I'll just talk you through it. Um, and the way I plan to achieve that is, I'm gonna show you a diagram in a second, but the way I plan you to achieve that is, I just need to get out there and run, and every, because this is gonna be a mindset thing, not a, um, um, like a physical thing, it's more physical than mindset, because my mind is gonna to wanna to give up before my body does. Um, and so each session that I run, I'm pushing my mind. So when I first started running, all, I've, got, I've got a distance, and I, I've got this distance where I planned, which I'll talk to you in a second. Um, and in this distance, it is uh, 4K one way, sorry, it's 4.5K one way, and 4.5K one back. So it's a little under 10K. But the idea is, when I ran it first, I'll stop, uh, run, stop, run, stop, run, stop, run, stop, the whole way there, run, stop, run, stop, run, stop, the whole way back. So I've got this little app that I use, which is a running app, and it tells me in my ears, when I'm running, it's like, you run 1K. You keep running, and it's like you run, hit two k. Keep running, hit three k. So I know when I've hit a certain k. So when I when I started running, it was just to see how I can do it. The second time, it's like right, okay, get your act together. Now you want to run one k without stopping. So you run one k without stopping, which found I found it incredibly hard. And then um, the next session, it's like right, now you need to run two k without stopping, and then you can walk. So I ran two k without stopping, and it's incredibly hard. The next run, which was every other day. I was, I was um, pushing myself a further K, I, you have to run 3K. And I was gonna increase it like that, all the way into hit uh, the, the whole run, which is just slightly under 10K. But because I'd done it, and I was pushing my mind every single session, when I got to the 5K, when I was like, right, I'm gonna run 5K without stopping, um, and then I'm gonna walk, walk from 5K to 6K, and then I'm gonna run the rest. But I got to the 5K, and when I, and I was running, because I'm so stubborn, it's like, actually, put, Chris, just push yourself. And I pushed myself the whole way and I was able to run the whole 10K because I was training the mind more than actually training the physical abilities. And by doing so, it is under two weeks and I'm already here. 
So now, any training, running training that I have from now until next Sunday, I'll be training, um, I'm getting my speed up uh, and really pushing my mind as hard as I can within that 10K sort of distance. With the swimming, it's pretty much similar, Sim it's the same. So when I was swimming, um, I was doing different strokes. I can continue to swim a whole mile because the aim was for me just to swim a mile, which is a 64 lengths of a 25 meter pool. And at first I was doing one breaststroke, one front crawl, one backstroke. And I've repeated that cycle. Um, in fact, I went a bit more depth to that. So I did one breaststroke, one front crawl, one backstroke. And then I did two front crawl, two breaststrokes, two back crawl. And then I done three, 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 four, 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 I five 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 six six six, and if you do that up from one to six, you hit sixty three lengths, and one more length is a mile. So it helps break your swimming pattern down, so it doesn't feel so tedious. And um, and I done that for a couple of weeks, and then after a couple of weeks, I got quite stronger. So I went from straight into um, ten front crawl laps, and then it was five breaststrokes, and then it was ten front crawl, and then five backstrokes, and then ten front crawl, um, five breaststrokes. And then I jumped to 15 front crawl, um, five backstroke, 15 front, this is the next session. Um, and now, because I keep training my mind, because I'm pushing my body, because it's hard to do front crawl with that many laps. Now, I the other day, I just went straight in, I've done 64 laps of front crawl non-stop. But the way I've done it, I um, I sprint two laps, I've done front crawl as fast as I can for two laps, I relax for two laps, and then I sprint front crawl as fast as I can for four laps, and then relax for uh, three laps, and then I sprinted as fast as I can for uh, six laps, and then relax for three laps, and by doing that, that's 20 laps. So I've done that three times, and then added four more laps into it. And by doing so, I'm way up here now. I'm way up here, so like, I'm very close to hitting the time, and I've got so much time to um, train for the swimming. So as soon as I hit the 15, the half marathon i'm going to be jumping straight onto that bike and i'm going to be jumping two sessions in because the transition from the bike stage to the running stage is the hardest part so i'll be putting in a lot of cycling um but that's to come into the next video which i'll talk about but let me just pause it and i'm going to go on to the next thing right okay so how do i plan to achieve this i'm going to skim through the nutrition because i've talked about it um and then i'm going to skim through the exercise well go through the exercise in a little depth um so with when I plan to achieve this is with the nutrition, my aim was to reduce the bad habits and reduce the amount of bad stuff I had. Luckily, I've got good knowledge of what I need to eat, so I've got an understanding how to eat, what to eat. So when I focus on just not eating, so January the 7th is when I started. When I started, um, the idea was to have no takeaways and fizzy drinks, which I did, completely cut out. And I'd done that, but had all the other stuff. And February, when I first started February, I had to take away something else, which was chocolate. And no chocolate, which was the hardest. And now I don't crave it at all. And it, it is no problem not to eat chocolate. Well, I still get the odd sight of looking at chocolate. But the more you don't do stuff, the more your body doesn't actually want it. When you first don't do stuff, your body's like, why are you doing this to me? What the hell are you doing? But if you get past that stage, you're on to a winner. And the next one, which just starts in March, will be no crisps. And therefore, like I've get, got rid of pretty much all my bad habits and I'm just left with good, healthy stuff. And then, ironically, you start eating a lot more healthy stuff. So that's the nutrition. The exercise. Before I go into the exercise, I'm going to put on a screen. I'm getting slightly better at this, but hopefully this is coming on the screen right now. And it's shown you that um, when I first started running, which was beginning of uh, January, I started in a, in, in a gym. And when I started in a gym, it was just on a treadmill just to get myself used to it and go from a level one exercise to level two. And um, after a couple of weeks of doing it in the gym, I had to go onto a road because running on the road is so different to running in the gym. And when I started running on the road, that's when I, I picked the the track to run. And when I first started, it it might be fast to you, but it's shocking to what I'm compared to, what I'm used to, because I used to be able to run like the wind. So on the screen right now, is the first run that I done when I first done the just shy of 8k or sorry 10k and as you can see it progresses every time I progress the running progress and the time comes down um, and it's in a very short space of time and everyone could do it it doesn't matter how unfit you are when you first start 
your, your time might not be as good as this, what you can see, or might be gone now, um, but as good as this, what you can see. However, your fitness will increase. You just got to get out there. To, um, you're going to be in bed and you're going to be like, I don't want to do this, but you have to get yourself out of bed. Your body's going to create all sorts of excuses not to do it. Um, you know, you can get the best people to encourage you in the world, but the most, uh, after all, is you're the person who's going to push yourself. So uh, your your abilities, physical abilities, will increase very quickly, but it, uh, you have to get out and do it. And you have to do the boring stuff, but when you do the boring stuff, which like go running, and you probably don't enjoy it, but it becomes enjoyable, and you start looking forward to your next run. So um, how do I plan to achieve this? This is the exercise part. So I've got to think of the type of training I need to do. First of all, because I'm only focused on swimming and running, so I need strength training, which means I need a gym. I need running training, which I mean I need a track, a, 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 a destination to run, and I need swimming, so I need a, I need a pool. However, I I have my business, which is helping people escape a body that they feel trapped in, the online program, impossible to impossible. Um, but I also work for a company, so I'm in... When I work for this company, I have I travel to London and I travel to London most weeks, like two to two five days a week, um, and from Devon. So I need to get strength training. And when I travel to London, I don't know which days I'm there. I only know which days I'm there a week in advance. So I can't really predict when I'm going to be where I'm going to be. So it's important for me to have gyms in both places. So I got two gyms. I got a gym up in London, and I got a gym down here in Devon. And people think that costs too much. However, there's a very good book called um, The Richest Man in Babylon. And it helps you talk about finances and things like that. And when it talks about saving, you know, you save 10% uh, of anything you bring into your wages. Your life doesn't really change. So and one of my gyms is £80, which is in London. And it gives me the destinations of the gyms in London. It's called Box Gym or Gym Box, one other way around. Um, and... You know, I'm, I'm happy to pay that because my health is important and it, it pushes me to use it every time I'm there. I'm in the gym pretty much every single morning because I want to get the most out of it because I'm only there two or three days a week. The gym down in Devon cost me £30, so it's roughly £110 a month that I spend on the gym. However, you don't really miss it in your lifestyle. you just got to substitute the things that you, you shouldn't be doing to use on the gym purpose. So um, now if I was around the country... And I was going to all around the country. In, if if you're someone who goes all around the country with your job or all around the world, so you don't know where you're going to be, when you're going to be. So it's hard for you to like be like me. And I know I'm going to be in London, so I've got a gym membership for London. I know I'm going to be in Devon, so I've got a gym membership in Devon. But um, you just have to pay on as you go. And you know it might cost you a bit more money. However, it's a lot worth it. Just to understand, estimate the kind of gym price it's going to be daily, and. Um, you know, budget that aside of what you're going to spend on your gym. Or you got some, if you're around the country, there's gyms that, the likes of Pure Gym um, and gyms like that, where you can have a gym membership to go to any Pure Gym around the country. And if there's not a Pure Gym where you've gone to for work or whatever reason, then you're just going to have to put your hands in your money in your pocket, your hands in your pocket, get some money and spend it on a day membership. But it's important to get your gym membership, two memberships. The second thing, I need a pool. So I need a pool swim up. So I've actually got a third membership because... The gym in Devon that I go to is really good for strength and training, but doesn't have a swimming pool. But it's a really good swimming pool that is like £20 a month, which is beneficial because it's going to help me. And it's like you're just chucking money away, but it's not. I, I like When you first do it, it's like gritting your teeth, spending all this money on the memberships. But when you start getting to do it, it's just like don't really notice it going and you kind of adapt your lifestyle and your life to it and you are able to afford it. So two things is gym and a pool. Memberships, both area, plan, done. Pool, done. The next thing is running. I've got to have some sort of track that I'm going to run. If you um, you know you've got to run, you just run up, go out your house and you just start running, then you don't know how your distance and you don't know how far you're running, so therefore you can't really measure it um, and therefore you can't really understand if you're getting enough training in. And if you do that, you're winging it and it's, it's not good. So... If you don't know where you go, the best thing to do is get a running app because I've got a running app and it the running app helps me measure the time, like I told you, which I'll put in the link in the description below of what it's called. Um, but with this running app, you can go out running. It'll, it'll say one kilometer, two kilometers, three kilometers, four kilometers, and you can keep running until you hit the kilometers that you want to hit, which is what I've done in London. Here in Devon, 
I know very well. So I know the tracks and I know the distance. So there's this one track that I go on, it's one straight line one way, one straight line the other way. Um, and then I will alter it every now and then to do some hill training and things, but I mainly stay on this one track. When I was in London and I had to do running training when I was in London, I didn't know where I was going. So I went out, I put my headphones on, I just ran a distance. I kind of knew the area that I was going. I kept running and running and running and running until I hit the distance, which was five kilometers one way, and then I can come back. So now when I'm in London, I know exactly which how where 10 kilometers is and the route that to run 10 kilometers. So one, planning the gyms to have. Two, um, planning if you need what gyms or pools you need three have a measuring tools like the running app that you need um, and then when i come on to the next one which is the iron man i'm gonna have to source myself a bike i'm also gonna have to source um the, the things that i need for the bike the equipment the kind of shoes that you need because it's important to have so and it's very important to do so um and the last thing i'm gonna go on which i can't remember is how does it look how do i plan it to look how's my weekly week gonna look so give me a second Right, so this is how I plan my weeks to look. Does it look like this? Most weeks it doesn't. But it's always good to have something to follow by um, because if you can't do it like this, then, um, well, if you go off tracks, you can always come back onto tracks. So the aim is to run at least three times a week. Um, the second thing is to have two strength trainings a week and to have a minimum two swimming um, trainings a week. So what I do, I pair the swimming and strength training together. So I try and do it into one hit. I do the strength training and swimming together, um, which is back to back. And the runnings, I try and do every other day. If I can have it like this every week, fantastic. So like run on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Um, and then the strength training Tuesday and Thursday. Sometimes the reason why I can't do it like this is because I also have a son that I have to look after, which I love. I'm making that sound like a chore. But when I look after him, I can't do my running because he's with me unless I strap him to the back, which is probably not going to happen. So I just do it around it. So sometimes I have to open up a Saturday or Sunday and do it on a Saturday and a Sunday, something that I've missed during the week. So this is how it plans to look. And this is what I get in. I make sure I get three running sessions in the week. I get two strength training sessions in a week and I get two swimming training sessions in a week. No matter what, how it happens, it gets in one way or another, but sometimes it just doesn't look as fluent at this. So I hope that's helped you understand how uh, planning and preparation, it's very simple, um, but it's understanding. One, sourcing what you need, regards to if you need a gym, um, a place where you need to run, also if you need to swim in. Two, the things that you're gonna need, like preparation, for example, something to measure it with, which is like a running app, which is very simple. To an aim that you want to aim for, so plan what you want to aim for, the kind of fitness level you want to achieve. When you hit that fitness level, then everything is going to be a winner. Um, and that's pretty much it, and now I'm waffling on. So if you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments below wherever I post this. Um, if you didn't, if you did enjoy it, tell others. If you didn't enjoy it, make sure you tell me. But until the next episode where I'll talk about something else relating to this event. Um, I'll see you in the next video and have a great day. Cheers, guys.